It is still morning. Good morning to everybody. Great to see you all. Um, I'd, I'd love us to maybe just take a few moments just to uh, close our eyes and just quieten our hearts and let's just focus on the Lord and let's in, invite him to be with us and, and speak to us. Our Father God, we, we, we love you. We praise you. We worship you. Thank you, Lord God, for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for your counsel. Thank you for your word. Lord, I just pray that you would um, open our hearts to receive from you this morning. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So good morning and, and welcome, everybody. It's great to see you all this morning. For those who don't know me, my name is Dennis. And together with my wife and uh, my wife Michelle, she's sitting over here, um, uh, with our four daughters, we've been part of Holvenier Church since October 2021. Um, we live with three of our daughters in Woodmansey, and in fact, we just moved out there uh, about two months ago. Um, we did a crazy thing in June last year. We bought a house on auction, um, and we've needed to strip it back and rebuild it. And some of you have been following this journey with us, and we are so incredibly grateful for the prayers and the encouragement and the support and the practical help and stuff that people have lent to us to get the job done. Um, but we've received so much from so many of you, and um, it's, you know, it's something that's really stretched us. It's been quite a challenge, but it would have been so much harder if we didn't have um, this wonderful family around us. And this is the family of God in action. We're not called to do life alone. Uh, we're called to be a family together, to support and encourage uh, each other as we, as we live life together. And um, I still find it so amazing that um, we have, for many, some of you, we haven't known for much longer than about two years, but you've become so close to us, and we've, uh, you've become friends, um, and it's as if we've become, it's as if, we, it's as if we've known you for a lifetime. Um, when we moved to the UK from Zambia, it was one of the loneliest times in our lives. It was a time of real struggle, but God brought us through that time. Uh, and he placed us into a loving community where we found family and we've made friends. And that's not the main part of my message this morning, but I just felt to share that this morning. I felt like that was perhaps maybe meant to be an encouragement for somebody here today that God puts the lonely in families. And if that's you this morning, I just want to encourage you to, to stick around and, and, and to trust the Lord and to press into him. Um, he's put you in a good place and you will find family and you will find friends here. And so the journey that we've been on um, over the last few months with our house uh, is kind of an analogy for the message today. Some of the challenges we faced with the house um, was that much of the building needed to be redone. Um, that's because it was no longer functional or it was no longer safe. Um, the house that we bought had really good bones, uh, added a good foundation. Um, the structure was basically sound, um, but the rest needed redoing. And some of the, we took on the challenge, some of the work we did ourselves, but we needed advice and we needed help um, on how to do it properly. Um, and, some, and for some of the work, we needed to bring in registered experts to do the work. We needed an architect, we needed a plumber, we needed an uh, electrician, a joiner, and we, we hired a building inspector to check that everything had been done according to regulation. Um, we had invested a lot of resources uh, into this project, a lot of time, a lot of resources, a lot of emotional energy into this home, and we wanted to make sure that it had been done properly. We didn't want to go through all that time and all that expense only to find out that it didn't pass the test. And with a project like this, two things are crucial. First of all, the foundations need to be right. This is the most important thing because poor foundations will simply not hold the building. But it also matters how you build upon those foundations, what materials you use, and how those materials are built up together to form the different parts of the house. And you want to build in ways uh, so that it lasts. 
And Paul, uh, a writer in the New Testament, he uses a similar illustration in his letter to the Corinthians. He wants them to understand that their lives together as a Christian community are like a building project. And how they build really matters. Because one day, everything that we do together will be tested. And that takes us to our reading for today from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10 to 17. And so we're going to put that up on the board. If you've got your Bibles, you can follow with me. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10 to 17. According to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation and someone else is building upon it. Let each one take care how he builds upon it, for no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. Now if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become manifest, for the day will disclose it, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. If the work that anyone has built on the foundation survives, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, though he himself will be saved, but only through fire. If you are a follower of Christ, God has called you and given you a purpose in life. He's called you and he has a purpose for your life. And your purpose is always worked out in community with fellow brothers and sisters in the family of God. And so it's not so much my calling or your calling because it's actually God's calling and he's called us to be a part of that. Our calling is always worked out in the overall, the overreaching purposes of God. All of us are called to be servants together, fellow laborers in his house in his kingdom, and each one of us has a role to play in building up the body of Christ. Whether you are a master builder, whether you are a plumber or a bricklayer, or whether you are somebody who just mixes the cement. And so even if you are not in any formal uh, leadership capacity, if you follow Jesus, you will be building into the lives of others, and it matters how you build. I'd now like to uh, take, uh, go into a bit more detail on three key points that Paul is making about how we should build. The first point that he makes is that we should build on foundations that have already been laid. We should build on the foundation that has already been laid. And we read this in verse 10 and 11. Paul writes, according to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation and someone else is building upon it. Let each one take care how he builds upon it. And this is the point, for no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. The most important thing in any building project is to lay a good foundation. If this is not done properly, the building has no integrity. It is a futile endeavor, it's utterly pointless, and no matter how well you build on it, it'll not withstand the test. In the end, it'll all come crumbling down. And this is the point. There is no foundation which can be laid other than Jesus Christ. And what I mean by that is his life, his death, his resurrection, and our relationship with the Father through him, through our faith in him, and through trusting in him. You see, the thing is that because of our brokenness, there are many other foundations, many faulty foundations that we attempt to lay. And we often need the Holy Spirit to show us where we are laying faulty foundations. And as I prayed about this, I thought it might be helpful if I, if I list some examples. And um, as I go through some of these examples, as I, as I share these with you, I'd like you to think about which of these do you most identify with? And so these are some of the faulty foundations that we sometimes try and build on. One of the, the, the first one is that sometimes we try to do things, we try to build things on a foundation of strength or force, forcefulness or self-reliance instead of a foundation of meekness, weakness, and reliance 
on Christ. Another faulty foundation is that we sometimes try to build on a foundation of self-righteousness. And we, so, we, so we end up working so hard to come across as uh, getting it all right and work so hard to come across as good people instead of having an awareness and a sense of mourning and grief over, over the extent and persistence of sin in our lives. Another flawed foundation is swapping out our relationship with Jesus for an adherence to the law. And it sounds like this sometimes. We say to ourselves, well, if I just do everything just right, then everything will work out as planned. It's kind of a a one-size-fits-all Christianity. It's kind of like if I follow this formula carefully, it's all going to be good. But instead, we are called to humbly walk with Jesus and accept the outcome of what is often a very deeply personal and often difficult and lonely journey with him. For some, it's building on a foundation of control and self-determination rather than one of self-surrender. For others, it's building a foundation on our gifting and our talents instead of yielding to the hard work of character formation. Trying to maintain a foundation of comfort versus being willing to forego or to suffer for the sake of others. Sometimes we want to build a foundation on, um, on our preference or our needs, um, sometimes even on our own personal pain versus loving others, looking out and, and, and loving others and putting others first. Sometimes our foundations are built around our pursuit for recognition and affirmation versus one of humility and obscurity. And you know, there are many other foundations uh, that we attempt to build on. And these are just a few that came to mind as I was preparing this message and and praying and asking the Lord. Uh, Many of these my father, by his grace, has needed to dismantle in my own life. Uh, before I started building on something that was a faulty foundation. And so I'd like us maybe just to take a moment um, to think about what faulty foundations is he, is he in the process of dismantling in your life at the moment. We're just going to take a moment and we're just going to ask the Lord, Father God, would you just show us what faulty foundation am I trying to build on at the moment that is not the right foundation? Thank you, Lord. The second point that Paul makes um, is that once you've got the foundations right, and and this is often an ongoing, lifelong journey, but once you've got the foundations right, um, how you build um, matters. And so we should build with stuff that will withstand the test. This is the second point, that we should build with stuff that will withstand the test. And he, and he highlights this to us in verse 12 and 13. He says that if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, uh, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become manifest, for the day will disclose it, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. Now, one of the greatest disasters in the UK in this generation was the Grenfell uh, Grenfell Tower fire. Over 70 people tragically lost their lives in that fire. It was the worst residential fire in the UK since the German bombings of World War II. And this was such a painful tragedy for many, and my deepest sympathy goes out to any listening today who are uh, who were affected or are affected by this event. But it came out later that, later that the developers used combustible material for the cladding of the building with disastrous con- consequences. What looked like a safe uh, and modern, attractive apartment block turned out to be a disaster with the, when, uh, because the, simply because the wrong materials had been used. And so not only does it matter what foundations we are building on, but it matters what materials we build with, because what we build with will be tested with fire. Anything that is combustible will be burned up on that day. 
Paul is clear to point out to us that one day, all of us, whether we believe in Jesus and are walking with him or whether we are not yet following Jesus, all of us will be judged according to how we lived. Each of us, if we are part of the family of God, will contribute in some way to the building of his body, the church, and what we build will be tested. And so we need to ask ourselves, firstly, what kinds of things am I filling in my life? What kind of things am I filling um, in my life? Am I, am I putting into myself? What teachings, what podcasts, what mo- movies, what books? Because the reality is that what we build into our own lives is what we will build into the lives of others. Secondly, we need to ask ourselves, therefore, what kinds of things am I building into the lives of others? We need to ask ourselves, are these things faithful? Are they biblical? Are they loving? Are they truthful? Are they edifying? Are they things that build people up? Does it reflect the character and the nature of God? Can the things that I'm building with be considered gold, silver, and precious stones? Or are they more like wood, hay, and straw? You see, these are materials that are not fit for purpose. These are materials that are brittle, combustible. These are materials that lack integrity or are impure. They are perhaps teachings or practices or attitudes that are false or distorted or out of proportion or self-serving or contrary to the gospel in some way or contaminated by our own personal sinful thoughts and ways. And you know, we are all guilty of reaching for those materials at times. The reality is we don't get it right a lot of the time. But the good news is that we are in a relationship with Jesus. His Holy Spirit lives in us. And if we are willing, the Bible says that he counsels us and he teaches us. He brings conviction and he brings perspective. He brings clarity and he brings purity. And I want to encourage you with a very practical and relational thing that you can do regularly in your walk with Jesus. I want to encourage you on a regular basis, get alone with him, ask him to shine his light into your heart, ask him to show you the things that you are not seeing, ask him to help you to walk closer with him. And um, this is a prayer that I learned from one of the writers of the Psalms, uh, a great man of faith, um, King David. And he wrote uh, many of the Psalms, and he, and he prayed this prayer regularly. He wrote it down in Psalm 139. He wrote this. He said, this is how he used to pray. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. And this leads me to my final point from verse 14 and verse 15. It says, if the work that anyone has built on the foundation survives, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, though he himself will be saved, but only through fire. So there are two things here. Firstly, there is a reward for those of us um, if what we have built survives on the day. And as I mentioned earlier, one day there will be a day of judgment. Jesus will judge all of us according to the way that we have lived. And if we have built well, we will receive a reward. But if we have built badly, we will suffer loss. Now, it's not clear uh, in the Bible what that reward will be. But it is clear that there will be a reward. There will be a sense of, wow, after all I've been through, after all the pain, after all the anguish, after all the careful, meticulous work, after all the times I chose Jesus, it was all worth it. There'll be a real sense of reward. And likewise, um, it's not clear what the loss will be, but it is clear that for most of us, if not all of us, there will be a sense of, oh no, what have I done over here? What have I tried to build over here? There'll be a sense perhaps of deep regret about stuff that we, we push, that we, that we discover later was not of him, or stuff that we ignore that, that we realize that actually was of him. For some of us, it'll be our life's work. 
simply because we failed to be careful uh, how we built on that foundation that was carefully laid in our lives from the start. And as I, reflect of the, as I reflect on this, I can't help but have a sense of regret and perhaps even fear. Um, as I think of some of the mistakes I've made as a parent, raising these little ones and, and building into their lives, and, and my daughters were in the meeting earlier on, uh, and, I, and I also think of some of the mistakes I've made as a, as a leader in the church or, or some of the mistakes I've made or, or my attitude towards a friend or a neighbor or a colleague or even a stranger. You see, there's a clear and somber warning from Paul. Now, the fear of God is a healthy thing in our lives. Uh, the writer in Proverbs said, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom, and we are meant to have a healthy fear and respect for God. It's a wise thing to make the necessary adjustments to how we are living in response to warnings in the Scripture. But this is important, and Paul is careful to make this point. He says that we should fear, fear the Lord, but we should not live in fear. I'll say that again. We should fear the Lord, but we should not live in fear. He's clear that all of us will face judgment one day, and he's clear that for most of us, there will be a sense of reward, and there will be a sense of regret. But he's also clear um, that if we put our hope in Jesus, if we trust in him, if we build on the right, right foundations, that we will be saved. And so I wanted to leave you with that encouragement, and that's where Paul leaves us in this scripture, that Jesus died on the cross for us, and that is the foundation that we must build on. And yes, we need to be careful that we build good things on those, on those foundations, but our hope one day is that we will be saved, and we can trust that Jesus had paid the, pi- the price for us, and that our hope in him is that we will be saved one day. So I want to leave you with that encouragement. We must build, and we must build carefully, but we must build without fear. I'd like to invite you to stand.